A Woodway man is under self quarantine tonight after he says he indirectly came into contact with someone who tested positive for the coronavirus. The unidentified man says his roommate was exposed to the Bell County man who tested positive for the virus. While neither he nor his roommate are showing any symptoms, the man is deciding to stay home out of an abundance of caution. The man works in the Woodway Public Safety Department. His job does not put him in direct contact with the public. He will stay home for 14 days. City officials will continue to monitor his health. As coronavirus concerns continue to grow, more people are staying home, meaning foot traffic at local businesses is slowing down. Nikki Laterulo spoke with some Central Texas restaurants about how this is affecting them. Nikki. Imani, last week night on 6 News at 10. Imani. Nikki, thank you. Beginning Monday morning at 8 a.m., all visitors and patients at Baylor Scott and White Hospitals will have to use a designated entrance and be screened upon arrival. The screenings will include questions like, do you have shortness of breath? Have you recently traveled out of the country? And have you been in contact with someone suspected of having the coronavirus? The hospital also says waiting rooms will be closed to large groups. Patients will only be allowed two visitors during visiting hours, and they've temporarily suspended entry of visitors under the age of 16. Tomorrow, most schools around Texas will be on extended spring break as a precaution due to the coronavirus. So we wanted to put together a list of resources available for families this week, whether it's food or activities to hold you over during the break. Curtis Quillen is here to break it all down. Curtis. Imani, the only major public on KCENTV.com. Curtis, thank you. President Donald Trump's new travel ban sent thousands racing to airports this weekend trying to get back home, making for long lines lasting for hours and many headaches to go along with it. Big crowd. And a similar scene at Chicago's O'Hare Airport this weekend. Passengers arriving from international flights were forced to stand in long lines for hours due to enhanced coronavirus screenings. Mayor Lori Lightfoot called airport conditions unacceptable, saying more screeners are needed to take temperatures. The Democrat directed her statements to Vice President Mike Pence and the Coronavirus Task Force, calling on them to communicate with local authorities before making any decisions. Last night, we saw their safety and security was seriously compromised and people were forced into conditions that are against CDC guidance and are totally unacceptable. She's also asking the CDC to stagger arrival times and hold passengers on planes until they're ready to be processed through the virus screenings. President Trump tweeted about the delay, saying airport checks are moving as quickly as possible, but that it is very important to be vigilant and careful. Well, social media is buzzing right now with talk of the coronavirus and misinformation is all over the place. It's hard to know what's real and what's not. Our Verify team is working to make sure you have the truth. Our morning anchor Chris Rogers is standing by to separate fact from fiction. Chris. Hey there, Imani. Good evening to you. To you. Chris, thank you. Now for everything you need to know about the virus, text coronavirus to 254-859-5481. You can also head to kcentv.com for the latest updates or download the 6 News app to receive notifications. Well, it's time now for a first check of our weather. Meteorologist Bill Heckey is standing by with the details. Hey, Bill. Hello, Imani, and hello to you. All right, thanks, Bill. An elderly couple in Connecticut separated by the coronavirus still found a way to celebrate their anniversary. Bob Shellard's wife Nancy is at a nursing home where no visitors are allowed due to coronavirus concerns. Bob will have to wait a full 30 days for the visitor ban to be lifted, but he's making the most out of the situation. On the married couple's 67 year anniversary, Bob showed up at the nursing home with a sign that says, I've loved you 67 years and still do. Happy anniversary holding it up outside the window so his wife could see. It makes me feel bad because I, I wanted her down with me and I know she can't. She's always smiling and there's just a sweetness to the two of them and what they share. Bob says he feels bad that his wife can't celebrate with him, but that he's glad his actions made her smile. Today, Pope Francis offered his prayers for health workers assisting people infected by coronavirus as Italy struggles to keep the spread of the illness under control. The Pope held his weekly prayer from a library inside the Vatican and streamed it online for a second Sunday. Holy Week and Easter services, which normally draw thousands of people, will be held without the public attending because of the outbreak. It's not clear how the massive events will be scaled down, but officials are studying ways to hold them in indoor locations with small representative groups attending. So it'll come a violent scene at a Texas grocery store. 
Plus, we break down social distancing. Stick with us. Welcome back. One person is dead and another is injured following a shooting in Harker Heights. It happened at Club Crush on Veterans Memorial Boulevard just after 3 this morning. That's where police say an argument escalated into a fight and then into a shooting. One victim died at the hospital. The other is expected to recover. The suspect drove off from the scene in a, in a black or dark gray Dodge Charger. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Waco police are investigating a hit and run that leaves a man with serious injuries tonight. It happened near the 100 block of South New Road. That's where officers found a bike that had been hit by a car. A short distance away, they found the victim, 40 year old Brandon Rank. He was taken to the hospital with significant injuries. Police are searching for a 2011 to 2014 dark gray Dodge Avenger with possible damage to the right front quarter panel. If you know anything, contact police. Four people are in unknown condition at the hospital tonight after being stabbed at a Texas grocery store. It happened at a Sam's Club in Midland. Police say an employee tried to stop 19 year old Jose Gomez from leaving the store. That's when they say Gomez stabbed two adults and two children. He was quickly arrested by two off duty Border Patrol agents. Officials say the incident is not related to shopping for supplies for coronavirus. So to come, we break down social distancing. I thought that need for toilet paper might have gotten out of hand. <laughs> we'll have your forecast after the break. Welcome back. You've been hearing it all week, how critical it is to practice social distancing. Well, here's a breakdown of what exactly that means and how you can comply while still keeping your children engaged. The school closures will make absolutely no difference whatsoever unless kids actually are kept home or socially distant. So let's walk through what actually social distancing means. It's when people should stay six feet away from each other to slow down the spread of germs. When social distancing is practiced, cases do go up, but nowhere near as much if people stay closer together during an outbreak. But there are places kids can go to burn off energy when staying indoors becomes too much. The park that we're in here is a perfectly good place for kids to come, not to congregate in large groups, but like with a parent or a, a sibling to come play. Sending your child to play with a large group of friends in an enclosed space like someone's home defeats the purpose of school closures. The place not to go is like to the coffee shop with the 30 other of your fellow kids, fellow teenagers who um, have been let out of school. Another option parents may be thinking about for childcare is asking grandparents to help fill in the gaps. Bielinson says, The other thing that we're concerned about is kids um, whose parents both have to work and they are taken care of by a grandparent, which is obviously one of the uh, high risk groups. The Georgia Secretary of State has postponed the presidential primary election due to coronavirus concerns. The primary, which was scheduled to take place March 24th, has been pushed back to May 19th. In person early voting, which began on March 2nd, has also been halted. Officials say one of the biggest considerations to move back the primaries was the safety of poll workers who are often older. 56 confirmed cases of the coronavirus have been reported in Georgia, as well as one death. We'll be right back.